um, with Tomas when I was visiting Slovenia, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe that's why I look young because I was just really yep. happy about it. But I'm actually also super happy that the presentation today, which is about five techniques to beautiful data insights with R and SSRs, and I couldn't be happier to present this with uh, uh, an R expert and data expert, Tomas Kastrin. Thank you, Julie. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, um, okay, so let's just start here. Now, I want to uh, take a moment here to uh, let you think about data for a little bit. You know, data is everywhere, and we have tools and technology for data, you know, pop out like just, you know, like rabbits, really. And it's getting harder and harder to choose which technology or which tool, and quite often we just get bogged down with all the technology side of it, and we forget around the, the visualizations and the insights that we want to get. So what I'm what I want to take the focus today together with Thomas is to distill five techniques that we um, that we find to be useful for us in our data professionals you know day to day uh, work and we want to share this with you so that you can also use it in your you know day to day data analytics or data um, data visualization uh, work. So we'll start with enriching. Uh, we'll start with telling you how to enrich your data, understand statistics, knowing the graph tools, telling the story, and most of all, enable users. And let me start with enriching your data uh, technique here. Now, what's interesting is SQL Server 2016 actually comes with R, meaning that R is integrated into um, into SQL Server, so you can run R scripts inside SQL Server. Um, using we can call it using T-SQL and what that means is you can now enrich your data not only you know after the math but before you know at the beginning at the source you can start building intelligent applications so if you have teams of you know uh, teams of data people I suppose or or just in general applications as well you can ask them hey you know can we add operational um, operational analytics inside your application uh, immediate you know immediately or we can operationalize this much easier so um, this is an example of uh, of an R script executed within T-SQL but what I'm trying to emphasize here you know Scenarios such as sales forecasting, uh, predictive maintenance, you can do that much easier because now data scientists and data developers can work on one single database and they um, essentially they can deploy kind of production data with, with the analytics behind it as well uh, much easier. The workflow is much easier, which Thomas will talk a little bit more later. And what's interesting is if you come from the R background or if you're you know exploring it, um, R scripts are available from the open source community and then you can also have a look at it from uh, have a look into it in, in the Azure marketplace and you can you know take these R scripts and deploy it into your um, into your database and, and could be productionized as well. So it's 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 pretty cool here. And on top of that SQL 2016 comes with a lot of features. So, for example, in memory, and and then it allows also high scale, uh, high, high scalability too. So that means not only you can do operational analytics real time, but uh, you can also integrate it with a lot of other features that uh, SQL Server offers. For example, in memory, you know, to make sure that we can scale it too. All right, so now I'm going to let Thomas talk a little bit more around the workflow and what it means for data professionals now that R comes to SQL Server. So thank you, Julie. <clears throat> um, so that we talk about the data enrichment, the, um, the workflow now that R is integrated in SQL Server 2016 becomes much, much more tighter. So on one hand, as you can see, um, there is a data scientist who is working with the data um, and is getting the data in terms of um, fast, in terms of the speed, in terms of the intensity, in terms of the uh, what kind of data he or she wants, um, much, much faster so that um, he or she sends the scripts to the SQL Server, SQL Server executes and then returns the results back. Re results are usually um, presented as a blob files, which may, might be a JPEGs or um, 
XML files, HTML files. It can also be the um, data frames, which are sort of a representation of tables, and also some other data types, uh, such as lists that R is tightly using. Um, and also the data enrichment in this case is also um, sh shutting down the boundaries between different roles. So previously we had data scientists, we had data analysts, we had DBAs, we had um, data stewards, and nowadays with R integration all those roles are much, much closer um, and might be some overlapping, but at, at the end, you know, um, getting data enrichment and getting insight um, into the data is now much faster and much easier. Um, uh, on one hand, you have R open uh, on the application side, and on the other hand, you have R revolution on the server side. There are two versions of R available with SQL Server 2016. One is open, which comes free, available in all editions of SQL Server, and then is our Revolution Enterprise, which comes with the Enterprise Edition, as the name suggests. Um, it it um, enables you to do all the high availability, sorry, um, not high availability, high scalability and in-memory um, statistical analysis. Um, making that, um, I think the understanding of the data is now much easier and much closer. Going back to you, Julie. Thank you. So, Julie? Oh, sorry. I've just muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry about that. So I just want to talk about the second technique here um, on understanding statistics. Now, this is very um, actually very important to understand a bit more statistics to get better insights. So if we, you know, if we look at data, a lot of the time we, you know, we, we get focused on, you know, how do we aggregate it better? Should we just use some average, max, and mean, and, you know, and that actually, um, that means our insights are now limited and there's more to data than just the, you know, aggregation, simple aggregation itself, you know, this, you know, distribution and I'm hoping that when, you know, we talk about normal distribution, you know, chart here, it doesn't, you know, make you just think, you know, statistics yeah. is really hard to understand and therefore it's paranormal distribution. I thought that was a little bit cute. However, Thomas can explain more about statistics here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, statistics so. is not just a paranormal, pa paranormal um, science. It's much, much better. So it's uh, effectively um, basic statistics that we need every day in terms of our work, in terms of understanding the data, can be found um, in Transact SQL using the mathematical functions like sum, average, and max. But with um, our integration, a lot of different um, additional measures are available. Uh, for instance, measures of center, which are the um, center of the middle of the data set, such as mean, median, mode, um, also um, measures of spread, which describe the how similar or varied our data set in the um, observed data set are, um, such measures including range, quartiles, variance, and standard deviation. Talking about variance, uh, we have measures of shape, which describe the distribution um, of our data set. Um, of course, talking about skewness and kurtosis in um, terms of the data shapes are also um, very useful um, methods. For instance, if you want to do outlier analysis, kurtosis would be outstanding um, measure to see the peaks or the flat relative um, data sets to relative to the normal distribution or if you wanted fraud detection also um, kurtosis would be a great um, way to um, find all those things. Going back, um, going forward to um, B or multivariate statistics, um, anything going beyond that, so beyond those measures of center spread or shape, um, can be summarized also in um, correlations or regression. So correlation is also um, the way of understanding um, two or more variables, how they correlate with, it, with, with each other, and also regression, which is becoming 
more and more um, popular with the data scientists, with, with the community, um, enables us to see and understand how the um, data um, relates to each other. So with regression, we simply get the estimate of the relationship between the variables. Um, with that, we also get the loss or the prediction function, which is sort of an entrance to our prediction world. Um, loss function is essentially the estimation how our model, when we are talking about the models, we will see later that in the demo, um, is performing in terms of a new data set in comparison to the training set. Um, all those statistics are available now in R and SQL Server, um, especially if you want to run anything against uh, transactional data, if you want to do a real-time analysis. And all those are basically um, understanding statistics and enriching your data, regardless of who the audience is, whether you are the data scientist, the analyst, or the DBA. Also, DBAs will um, have something out of that. Um, and going on further... Yeah, so if I may add here, uh, Tomas, um, it's quite interesting because if you took an example on uh, on adventure work scenario, which is something that you'll be familiar with, you know, the, the data is largely about retail data and, and we see data around um, sales, for example, and then if you put your, uh, if you put a sales and marketing uh, analyst role here, the kind of uh, the kind of things that they'll be interested in is analyzing. You know, how would they say? Um, you know, they devise a campaign that is related to or is um, is related to discount percentage on the on the on the sales orders. How does it uh, relate to one another? So, no longer we you know sit and look at sales data from just you know some average mean like we've mentioned before. We can analyze it a bit you know, a bit uh, deeper now into how well has our, um, our, uh, our sales seen, uh, gone since, uh, since we introduced certain discounts um, into, into the market. So I'm yes. going to start with the, the demo. Okay, so this is the new um, SSRS. It, it looks like this now. So I'm just going to take you back to the scenario that the sales and marketing analyst here. So if you want to know around, you know, what, what would be the order quantity like per, uh, per sales order, um, do we actually see a lot of, um, you know, high volumes, you know, order quantities per sales order or do we see, you know, just uh, like a smaller quantity here? So using box plot, so going back to statistics before, if you understand about distribution, you can think around, okay, how do we want to present the data? So in this case, I'm just using box plot here and quickly just from, you know, using this simple visualization, I can see that, you know, Vest has got higher uh, range of order quantities per sales order compared to, say, something like CAPS. So using this visualization, I can sort of set a baseline. This is what some of the, um, what the distribution of my order quantities per sales order for this particular product subcategories. And then, you know, again, going back to the, um, to the sales and marketing analyst, I can start thinking around, all right, so I've introduced a discount percentage in the last, whatever, say for example, a few weeks. How does that affect my, um, my actual sales? So um, I'm just gonna scroll to the right here. I tried to do this very quickly on SSRS and I was just looking at, you know, uh, the relationship between the two and at the moment it's a little bit tricky for me to understand the data and, you know, I was I was just talking to Thomas about, you know, this particular scenario and then he mentioned to me, you know, have you tried it in, you know, visualizing it in R? So I gave that, I, I gave that a go and this is what I came up with. So a simple one, so for example with the uh, box plot here, 
again, it looks somewhat similar to what I showed you before with the um, with the baseline for the order quantity per sales order here. But now it's much easier for me to see the outliers. So like all these dots here, and, and it's it's pretty cool. Um, and interestingly enough, the code that the, I'll show you the, the differences between the, the two. So let me show you the SSRS first. Now, this is the box plot for SSRS, right? And if I go to data set properties, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I have to build all, all the calculations on the percentiles and everything else here so that I can build the, um, the box plot. So it, it's customizable, but it's a little bit manual. Now I'm just gonna compare it with what uh, what what it looks like in R, and if we integrate it, how much easier it is. So this is my stored procedure for my box plot for R. So essentially, I build the SQL query first, and and that's shown here. And then all I have to do is say I'm putting all the data set into ggplot, and then I'm gonna call geoboxplot um, function here, and that actually builds. Uh, builds uh, this this box plot here, right there, and then if I scroll a little bit to the right, and this is my um, regression analysis uh, of this kind of percentage and order quantity. Before everything is clumped together, um, because I'm I'm only trying to use just one chart to show it. It uh, I could have split it up into you know multiple charts, but it's a bit harder to do. But in R, there's a way of you know doing this in in kind of matrix or tiles way, where you can uh, quickly visualize you know what works well and what doesn't work well. In fact, if I have a moment here, I'm hoping that this would work well. Um, hopefully, it won't take too long to produce. Yeah, so I'll just show you quickly. Um, uh, like just scanning quickly, right? Using visualization again, I can see that bikes here uh, is not. I think the relationship is not as strong as what you would see in the clothing uh, product subcategory. So perhaps for the bikes product category, we better off with different campaign that is not related to discount percentage. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add um, to this, Tomash? I just like the comparison between the Transact SQL and the uh, SSRS, how you um, embedded all the nice diagrams and graphs <coughs> in comparison to R. So um, what do you think is um, R was, how based on your experience, was it harder, was it simpler, was it, you said it was quicker, but was it also simpler for use or can you just share? Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, as a, I, I, I wouldn't call myself expert. I'm actually probably beginners in R. I'm, I'm learning a lot actually uh, in the last uh, in the last year or so. Uh, what's good is that there are lots of samples out there, and then uh, the more you get into it, the more practice you get into it, the easier it is, and you you can see that a lot of the uh, statistical calculation is, is already built in, so um, all you have to do is understand the function, what it does, what's the input, what, and what it will produce, and then integrate it. That's Correct. what I find uh, uh, beautiful about, about, about <laughs> in, in, in SQL Server. And, you know, the demo earlier that I showed you kind of introduced to our next technique here, which is knowing the graph tools. So once you know the underlying statistical side of it, and then now you can explore the kind of graph tools that you have. So I've shown you a little bit on SSRS, and I've shown you the a bit of a technique on R here, but Thomas will continue more uh, on the deep dive of the uh, R and SSRS here. Yeah, so as Julie already showed a couple of beautiful demos and examples, um, the integration of R in um, reporting services um, is done using the store procedure, which is new to SQL Server 2016. Based on that and uh, Transact SQL, you just generate a code. So you set the input data set, the output results. Um, as mentioned earlier, output result can be a blob file as in <coughs> the format of a JPEG image, which is later embedded into um, 
reporting services. It can also be a data frame or da data um, useful for um, any kind of statistics or any kind of ways to combine um, additional statistic statistical data with your um, transactional data that you have stored in SQL Server. Um, and also, as Julie, Julie already showed, you can combine all those charts um, with existing reporting services. So it's up, really up to you how you want to set and create the presentation of the R and all the visualis visualization. And it also enables user not only understanding data through um, graphs, but also enriching the data using um, any kind of statistic, statistics, um, any kind of um, statistics in terms of um, let's say clustering, let's say um, association rules or factor analysis, whatever you want to do with that, it's also available there. Um, and also, as already Julie mentioned, customization of reporting services in R can be done also very um, granularly on um, data level. So you can add any kind of visualization which can then dynamically be called in reporting services either by using some um, parameters or drop-down menus um, which enables the user to have much more control of the graph and the report. And of course, the end user, whether it is a um, data analyst or a business person, um, all people can then um, get much more out of data. Of course, which also leads us to some predictions. Um, all the lineup that Julie already mentioned before um, is also prepared for data predictions. The R in SQL Server enables um, data scientists to have data predictions testing the models, which you can also do in reporting services very, very easy. So I think we can go to our next demo where we're going to show how to customize our reporting services. So going back to our story that Julie started, so we have our um, order quantity and um, discount percent and we want to visualize that. So imagine having, you know, end user trying to do some um, understanding of the data. We said, okay, we can do it with a table, we can also do that with a graph. So you can now say, okay, here's a graph, um, sorry, here's a report where you can select different kind of um, different kind of graphs, so you can select bar chart, you can select pie chart, you can select line chart, whatever. In this case, in this demo, we just decided to take two of those in order to understand much better the way data is prepared. All those calculations in the background um, are done with this external procedure running and pushing the code from SQL Server to our engine and coming going back. So yeah, if you click on the pie chart, you will get different presentation of the data as well. So now you can understand the distribution of the order quantity per product category. Again, something different to be understand, but very helpful in terms of the end user to see and understand um, the inside of the in-depth of the data. Going on further, so let's imagine that now that we have some simple statistic covered, so going from bivariate to multivariate, um, imagine that you understand the order quantity distribution and the discount distribution, but you want something more. Let's say you want to come to the marketing people and say, okay, so how do our customers cluster or group into different customer, uh, in di in, into different clusters? Again, we did a simple um, R integration with, an L, uh, with reporting services um, showing you um, the clusters. Again, end user can select by themselves number of clusters, whether it's two, three, four, five, six, and showing the beautiful dendrogram. So yeah, I think so this is the, the number of clusters you want to show. And then based on the dendrogram, okay, it might be a bit crowded, but then there is also cluster statistics which we added just for the sake of understanding. So let's see, okay, number cluster number two in terms of water quantity, um, it's very specific that a lot of customers in cluster number two are 
um, are having 11 or 12 um, orders, order quantities, um, the same applies for um, discount. Um, there might be, um, you know, a particular um, cluster like cluster number one or cluster number two, which is very famous. So cluster number one, you know, majority of the customers are having 5% of discount. Cluster number two, um, all the people are having 2% of discount. So all these insights gives you a better understanding of your data in terms of whatever analysis you want to do or in terms of marketing campaign you want to do. So now that we have a couple of clusters and that we understand how the clusters are functioning, so one is very common to a um, different order quantity or different discount quantity, what we want to do next in our story is we want to see how these customers are behaving in terms of cross-sells. A cross-sell is a way to persuade our customers to buy more. For instance, if you buy a bike, a natural cross-sell would be um, a chain or a lock for bike so that it's not going to get nicked immediately. Um, so based on this scenario, we decided, okay, we created a, a model um, in the background and now we want to see how our model is performing. So this is the confusion matrix just simply saying how we how our predictions were done and you can see that the correctness of predictions and by the way we were doing naive bias is 78 percent and the confusion matrix explains how well the predicted ones were and which we didn't um, co predict correctly. Once we have this in compliance with you know business people and CEO we can then easily and pretty much quickly um, push these models to the deployment and also we can test the model. For instance, let's say we have a new model, um, sorry, a new customer coming and we want to see how the customer is performing. So what we want to do is for a particular customer um, we want to um, see how our model is performing. So let's say that um, we have a new customer saying that this customer will have order quantity of 10, discount percent of 5. Um, he already bought something from the category of clothing and we're gonna put the model we just created, model number 6, oh, we created a couple of days ago. <laughs> um, and we want to see how the model is performing with the new data. And yeah, there it is. The model is saying that um, this customer is 99%, the model is 99% confident that this customer will have capability of doing some additional cross-selling, which is perfect for a campaign. And to sort of finish the story all together with a prediction now, we can say, okay, we've seen how our customers are um, clustering in different clusters, in different segments, and now we can say for each segment, you know, what kind of um, what kind of marketing tactic or marketing campaign we want to choose, and for each of those segments we can then do um, prediction models, and based on that then we can say, okay, how much how confident are the models are. But before doing that, as we've shown, we've just shown the clustering. Um, we also, you, you can also do any kind of multivariate statistics, which kind of, kind of sums up all the um, analytical circle when understanding the data and understanding the enrichment um, of the data that it is lying in your um, database and transactional world. Julie, do you want to add something at this point? Um, no, just kind of, uh, actually, you know, something just as a small bit. So, you know, just remember our story earlier about the sales and marketing analysis, uh, analyst, rather, they're thinking about is their campaign has been useful, so they're looking at this kind of percentage, and, I, and I've just shown you that uh, certain things just doesn't work, for example, bikes doesn't work too well, but for, and then Thomas has, you know, shown you the cross-sell, so that may be another method of, you know, increasing order quantity per sale, so that's, 
that's the goal of the story here. So um, let's park that scenario for now. I'm going to show you a little bit more later. But let's continue on on the mastering the storytelling here. You know, we've, we've told you three techniques earlier, right? The first one is enriching your data that's at the source or enriching it through um, and reaching it through uh, visualization side of it. And then, um, and then the second one, we talked about understanding statistics and then tying it up into the, uh, into the graph tools. Now, we've got all three discussed with you. The fourth one is to do with master storytelling, and this is the key here. So if you do the, the first three and not tying it together, it's going to be pretty tricky to, uh, to send the message across. And in fact, uh, Thomas just found this clip in here, which I'll let him to describe a little bit more. Which is perfect, thank you. <laughs> um, this is a clip, you know, circling around the web for, you know, ages, I think, and it clearly shows, you know, that um, you can easily fail when telling a story about the statistics. Um, so, you know, you should choose wise what you're trying to say uh, based on the statistical findings and um, try to support what you found out with, of course, a sense, not a nonsense, like this clip is showing. And also, when it comes to the graphs, um, graphs should also be supporting the sto your story. So imagine you're having a graph like this one, where there is um, four KPIs, um, all sm all buckled up in one graph instead of just, for instance, taking an average or something out of all these four. And on top of that, there is also a linear overall performance. So again, try not to overdo um, with graphs. Try to support the story that you are telling and um, don't do too much. Sometimes too much can overkill, can be overkill to your story. So you should really, really choose wisely how you want to visualize your data. And um, Julie, how do you want to visualize your data? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is uh, this is something that I, I just kind of learned recently. Usually I have these like charts of things, um, as in like a. a, a I think it's it's available on the web where you, if you search through you know uh, visualizations guide or something like that, um, you will see like a kind of like a, a, a one pager on on how to uh, when to use which chart. But there's this website that I want to show you. Actually, Thomas told me about this. Dataviscatalog.com, which is super awesome because it actually focuses on a couple of things. So the first one is the function. It will it will ask you. So what is it that you want to show with data? Is it comparisons? Is it uh, you know trying to show proportions or is it distribution, etc.? So if you click on one of them, so for example uh, comparisons, then it will show you the options of charts that you can use to do comparisons well and then if you um, and then you know going back if you actually know what charts you kind of want to use um, if you want to go that way and then you want to know what's best what kind of uh, visual uh, what kind of insights best uh, to be shown using that particular chart type uh, that website also show this um, the description of that particular chart so for example in this one is happens to be a line chart which shows a distribution um, and and it will show you all the descriptions and and the functions and in fact there is uh, uh, this one here on the on the bottom it actually is noted uh, tools to generate visualization so the R graph or cookbook for R so if you want to learn more there, um, there are some links from that particular website that I have found pretty useful. Yeah, and there are also some beautiful charts available um, on this website as well. Um, and you should, you know, consider thinking how do you want to choose and uh, which graphs you want to use. Um, coming back to those, yeah, thank you. This is the website. Looks really nice. Um, you can search by the functions, or you can search by the data you want to choose. And, yeah, Julie, you can add some words to that. Um, All right. So, yeah, I'm just showing you yeah. briefly around, uh, around the website uh, that you can take a look later. Yeah, it's so, and then I think Thomas now is going to talk more about playful charts. Well, 
yeah. <laughs> Um, so the playful charts, um, you know, some of them can be found um, on the website, but I think that the world of the visualization of the graphs is constantly growing and um, changing, evaluate, um, um, slowly going forward, um, and there is always something new coming out. For instance, if you if you look at the Power BI, um, the abstentions that are growing steadily from month to month, and nowadays you can find a lot of useful things there. Um, the same goes for the R. There is, you know, a lot of new libraries available each month um, at the R community and the CRAN um, compository. So um, when you're doing the charts, you know, you should really just think um, how you want to tell the story um, and um, what you want to point out with either with a graph or either with a, a raw table or raw data. Um, some of the useful charts we find browsing through the net and based on the um, particular um, experience, past experiences, where um, I'm just going to point, point out a couple of them. For instance, uh, maps. Um, I don't see a lot of people using ge geo maps. For instance, if you're doing a like the one, the, the, the sample that we did with the AdventureWorks, you know, um, those kind of maps would be really beautiful, adding additional information to our customers. Also, heat maps or cluster maps. Um, if you're doing a text analysis or if you're doing anything with the text, you know, the word cloud would be really, really super cool. Also, diagrams, Sankey diagrams is very popular nowadays. Also available in Power BI, Steam Graphs and also infographics, which is, you know, another version of the um, visualization itself. And also, if you're doing something with the networks, like social networks, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, um, also you can use that, but also other networks which support the mathematical graph theory are very, very, very beautiful and um, very useful. So you should really choose wisely to support the story based on the graphs and based on the um, data and uh, um, the point that you're trying to sell with the data, not that you would fail like with the clip we just seen a couple of slides back. Um, Julie, you want to add something or? Yeah, yes. so, yeah, uh, you know, going back to playful charts, some charts or some visualization, they allow interaction, which is good uh, for analysis, but it's not something that uh, you can, uh, that, that would be useful in all cases. So, again, this is going back to the choose wisely, and in yeah. fact, um, you know, with that going to our next technique, which is to enable users, it, it's uh, choosing which visualization to use um, can be simplified by going back to, you know, what do you really want to enable users to do? So these are some of the questions that you should really have on your checklist when you, um, when you write when you write a report or write a dashboard or any infographics or visualizations really you know does the um, does the report have the appropriate details for for the audience you know who are your audience and then does it provide insights for a purpose so think about actions and decisions it's good if it's intended to be informative and then you know the next question is you know, is it only for educational purposes, or do you really want someone to take an action on it? And then, if you really want to, you know, that the audience to take an action on it. So, for example, uh, you know, a sales marketing analyst or sales marketing manager, whether you know, what what are the key information that they need to to know so that they can make that decisions or do that actions immediately. And then. Once you know the purpose, you know you know your audience, who they are, and then you know the kind of details that you want to show, you know, you'll now start thinking around the layout side of it. Does it have a pro appropriate layout? Uh, is it delivered in the right medium? So, for example, if the sales and marketing manager is mostly using tablet or their phones and they're not using desktop at all, then, you know, what is the best way to uh, to deliver that? And then the next thing that you have to think around, and this is also related to providing the appropriate details, is providing it at the right uh, at the right time. So you know, think about the latency. What kind of latency do you need to cater for? And then what kind of frequency? So uh, as an example, if you're um, say if you're a sales marketing 
analyst or manager in this case, do you want to be reminded that you know the perhaps the stock is low or something like that, or maybe a, a specific order, um, specific specific orders are just you know shooting up the roof, and it, you know do you really want to have that notified on you know every second every day, or you know uh, and that that's knowing which frequency or which frequency on what medium to deliver this information kind of uh, would be based on what kind of actions you want the uh, the target audience to so in fact you know it's really interesting because SSRS you know has been around for a long time and it has a lot of these capabilities that that allow some of the scenarios that I mentioned earlier about you know being uh, notified about uh, a, a particular anomaly, for example. So there is a, an email alert, and then there's also data-driven subscription that is, you know, available. Uh, th that both are available from SSRS for a while back, and now in SQL Server 2016, it's being enriched further with having this uh, mobile scenario where um, where you can now view the reports on on mobile, and not only that, you can also pin it to pin reports to uh, to Power BI as well, and and the from kind of the reporting side of it in the in today's world we can also consider uh, another visualization tool which is power bi actually power bi is more than just visualization tool it's also um analytical tool too you can embed our data set you can embed our visualization too in fact i've got a couple of demos here to just to uh to show a little bit of that so let me see um, I think it's it's this one here. So this is actually pinned from my SSRS report. I, I pinned it from from SSRS report, and it's shown here. So remember, going back to this particular chart, right? I I, I managed to pin it to Power BI, and the same thing with the R uh, regression visualization. I've pinned it here, which is which is nice. Now you can uh, create more coherent dashboard with other data if if you'd like to. Uh, and then, and then, so uh, also, I want to demo something quickly around embedding our visualization into into Power BI. So, what's really cool is that you can use the filter capabilities within Power BI. So, for example, um, at the moment, I'm looking at components. Uh, components analysis of discount percentage against order quantity, what, what the correlation would be. So if I choose bikes, then it just shows me bikes, and then you've seen this earlier, I've demoed it earlier before, where bikes are not so good for discount percentage compared to something like um, clothing. Then if I want to, if I want to analyze all categories, I just remove that filter and it should show everything now. Yeah, so it will show everything now, and you can just quickly scan through and and see the data there. Is there anything you'd like to add here, Tomash? This is beautiful. Yeah, uh, this is something which you know the data scientist would give to a um, people from business that they can easily understand the data. And um, there is also something we prepared that you know the CEOs or the management people would end up using just to have a quick overview. Can you also show up for the you know for the takeaways yeah yeah okay so uh, I I'll switch back to the uh, to the slide first if I may and then we'll mm -hmm. we'll quickly we'll quickly show you how we put it all together so actually you know what oh, well, let's go back to the demo <laughs> apologies for that <laughs> Um, it might be best if we bring this up now. Uh, let me see. Okay, so going back to Thomas's scenario with the CEO. Yeah, so this is something uh, at the end, you know, that now that we've shown the whole landscape of the reportings, um, this is something that um, the CEO would see, you know, what is the weekly average, um, weekly order quantity, or the CEO strategy, you know, for instance, if, that we are doing the marketing campaign, and, you know, this can easily be um, visualized also on the mobile phone or the tablet any other device um, and this is something you know it's just you know very um, informative very um, playful charity to say 
um, but not something you know that the statistician, the data scientist, or the business people would use. As Julia already showed, you know, for those are um, Power BI or Power BI on the web, which are very helpful for understanding the statistics and enriching your data. And this one would be also beautiful for enabling users to do actions on that. So, Julia, okay, want perfect. to. Yeah, so thanks for adding that and reminding me the uh, the overall uh, the overall you know putting it together with with what SSRs now have to offer. It's much kind of um, uh, tighter uh, tighter loop in terms of uh, visualization or presenting it to the users these days. All right, so. Just the key takeaways, we talked about the five techniques in reaching your data, understanding statistics, knowing the graph tools, mastering storytelling, and all of these four techniques eventually uh, will, the, the success of your visualization really will be determined by how much you have enabled users. So all five techniques are, you know, things that you can kind of explore uh, from now. Um, I would, I would think that you would need to know all five uh, reasonably well before you can achieve beautiful and actionable data insights and visualizations.